Alright, we're gonna take a break. Um, I suggest you gather your thoughts, but uh, I'll be back in 10 minutes to ask more questions. Have you ever forgotten your phone? Why did you realize you'd forgotten it? The realization probably didn't dawn on you immediately. More likely you reached for your phone, pawing for it in your pocket or handbag, and were surprised by it not being there. And your heart jumps into your throat. Did I lose it? Did it get stolen? Then you slowly retrace your steps. Ah, oh, crap. In my case, my phone's alarm woke me up as usual, but I realized it needed to be charged. It was a new phone that had this nasty habit of leaving apps on overnight that would drain the battery. So instead of putting it in my bag right away, I left to plug it on my dresser while I took a shower. It was one small change to my morning routine, but that was all it took. Once in the shower, my brain picked up right where it left off, and that was it. Forgotten. This wasn't me just being forgetful. I looked it up. This is a recognized brain function. Your brain doesn't just work on one level, but it works on many. And here's the thing. There's a part of your brain that just deals with routine, so that the rest of your brain can think about other things. Think about it. You think about your last commute. What do you actually remember? Little if anything, probably. Most common journeys blur into one, and recalling any one in particular is scientifically proven to be difficult. Most people call it autopilot, but there's a danger there. If you have a break in your routine, your ability to remember and account for the break is only as good as your ability to stop your brain from going into routine mode. But I didn't do that. I got Sam ready for school as usual, and the routine started up. Except for forgot. My brain was back in the routine. I showered. The radio forecast was great. I gave Sam his breakfast and loaded him into the car. He was so adorable that morning, complaining about the bad sun blinding him, saying it stopped him from taking his little nap on the way to school. That was routine. It didn't matter that my phone was on the counter, charging silently. My brain was in routine mode, and as far as I knew, my phone was in my bag. This is why I forgot my phone, not forgetfulness, not negligence, nothing more than my brain entering routine mode and overriding the exception. Autopilot engaged. I left for work. It was a sweltering hot day already. The bad sun had been burning since before my phone woke me up. The steering wheel was burning hot to the touch when I sat down. I thought I heard Sam shift over behind my seat to get out of the glare. But I got to work. Submitted the report, attended the morning meeting. It wasn't until I took a quick water break and reached for my phone that the illusion shattered. I did a mental restep. I remember the dying battery. I remember putting it on charge. I remember leaving it there. My phone was on the counter. Autopilot disengaged. Again, therein lies the danger. Until you have that moment, the moment you reach for your phone and shatter the illusion, that part of the brain is still in routine mode. It has no reason to question the facts of the routine. That's why it's a routine. Attrition of repetition. My brain was telling me the routine was completed as normal, despite the fact that it wasn't. It wasn't that I forgot my phone. According to my brain, according to the routine, my phone was in my bag. Why would I question it? Why would I check? Why would I suddenly remember out of nowhere that my phone was on the counter? My brain was wired into the routine, and the routine was that my phone was in my bag. The day continued to bake. The morning haze gave way to the relentless fever heat of the afternoon. Tarmac bubbled. The direct beams of heat threatened to crack the pavement. P 
People swapped coffees for ice smoothies, jackets discarded, sleeves rolled up, ties loosened, brows mopped. The park slowly filled with sunbathers and barbecues. The thermometer continued to swell. Thank God the offices were air-conditioned. But, as ever, the furnace of the day gave way to a cooler evening. Another day, another dollar. Still cursing myself for forgetting my phone, I drove home. The day's heat had baked the inside of my car, releasing a horrible smell from somewhere. I arrived in the driveway. Where's Sam? Damn it. As if the phone wasn't bad enough, after everything I left Sam at the nursery. I immediately sped back to the nursery, got to the door and started practicing my excuses. I saw a piece of paper stuck to the door. Overnight? What? The door was fine this- I froze. My knees shook. Vandals. A change in the routine. My phone was on the counter. I hadn't been there this morning. My phone was on the counter. I'd driven past because I was drinking coffee. I hadn't dropped off Sam. My phone was on the counter. He moved his seat. I hadn't seen him in the mirror. My phone was on the counter. He'd fallen asleep out of the bad sun. He didn't speak when I drove past his nursery. My phone was on the counter. He changed the routine. My phone was on the counter. He changed the routine and I forgot to drop him off. My phone was on the counter. Nine hours. That car. The baking sun. No air. No water, no power, no help. That heat. The steering wheel too hot to touch. That smell. No. Shock. My phone was on the counter and my son was dead.